special welcome to today's uh, podcast. I am excited to have uh, my first guest from Malawi. Chiambi, welcome to my podcast. You are my first uh, guest from Malawi. I am super excited. How is Malawi? Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Sarah. Malawi is good and I'm so excited to be uh, hosted by you. I've been uh, following your podcast. Yeah, so you are an inspiration. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that uh, feedback and thank you for engaging uh, uh, with uh, my content. So one of the things that actually attracted uh, me to, to you in terms of having you as my guest is uh, because you've actually been quite active uh, in terms of talking about mental health. And um, I thought we would actually talk about uh, mental health with an African context as well, because I see that you're doing a lot of work, uh, you know, in the area of uh, even supporting students. And, uh, uh, you know, I love the fact that you host uh, webinars. Uh, but before we get into that, let's get to know you. Uh, tell us who is Chiambi and uh, tell us uh, the journey that you, you've walked and, um, yeah, how you got involved with the work that you do. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Sarah. So uh, I am Chiambi Sandeguera. I'm a wife to uh, a lovely man, uh, Mr. Adrian Guela. I love you wherever you are, <laughs> if you are hearing me. <laughs> yes. All right. So I'm a mom. I'm also a pastor. I'm a mental health therapist. Uh, I have so many roles <laughs> to do. Yes. So uh I, I am from Malawi, as you have stated. I stay uh, in Zomba, which is one of the cities in Malawi. I'll be glad you have to pay us a visit, Sarah. I would love <laughs> that. I would love yes, that. So um, I have a son. Now uh, he's three months old. His name is Eli. He's a very uh, lovely boy. He's an inspiration. Yes. So um now to the professional side as you have uh, already said i'm a mental uh, health uh, practitioner i work with uh, zomba mental hospital which is uh, a government psychiatric hospital so we only see psychiatric cases so it's a special unit uh, spe um, specialized uh, in caring for people that have uh, mental health disorders so when we say mental health disorders, uh, we mean uh, all kinds of conditions, uh, either they have psychosis, uh, they have um, mood disorders, we have heard about mania, we have heard about depression, uh, we have heard about uh, substance use. All right, so uh, Sarah, yes, I'm here. Yeah, so yeah, I work uh, with Zomba Mental Hospital, as I said, uh, which is uh, a big psychiatric unit uh, in Malawi. It's a psychiatric hospital, so we receive uh, different cases of uh, psych mental health disorders from all over Malawi. So this is uh, the only hospital, government hospital in Malawi that offers uh, mental health care. Yeah, so it's a very big institution. Uh, we have uh, different wards. Uh, we have male, uh, we have males, we have females, we have children, and even people uh, with uh, disabilities whereby they, they can't be cared at home. So we even care for them uh, at, at our psychiatric unit. So it's a very big uh, institution. Yes, yeah, so um, I did uh, mental health, I studied I studied bachelor's uh, bachelor in, of science in mental health uh, at uh, Saint John of God, uh, which uh, is under Anzuzu uh, University that accredits uh, the papers. Yes, and uh, before that, I had a diploma in uh, clinical 
person. So as an ambitious lady, I I I saw uh, it was myself. So I I pursued uh, the the pastures of science in mental health. Uh, looking at um, the situation uh, that we, we have in Malawi, we have a shortage of uh, mental health uh, practitioners. due to different factors all right sorry for that uh yeah so uh on my interest of mental health as i said I, in, in our country there are very a few uh psychiatric uh clinical officers and even um different cadres to do with uh, mental health so i was so passionate uh, to see people how they were managed where i was working uh, at the district hospital it is it's, it was a small hospital it's a small hospital uh, in malawi that's where i was uh, working at first before uh, going to uh, a big now psychiatric unit so there are uh, people uh, were not um they they like uh, that kind of uh, care mm -hmm. Uh, due to shortage of uh, mental health practitioners. So after seeing that and uh, seeing how people, uh, they really need the care, there were, lo there were lots of cases coming, but we had no knowledge on how we have to manage them. So I decided that why can't I be a solution to uh, this kind of uh, population? Yeah, so that's when I now started to have uh, interest uh, in issues to do with mental health and I have friends, uh, even family members that were also affected uh, by uh, some of the conditions uh, to do with mental health. So I was like, me too, I can be a solution to help even others and even to support uh, those that are close to me whenever they uh, experience such issues. And now uh, we are healing lots of uh, suicidal cases. Uh, we have, uh, we are healing so many stories to do with mental health, people dying of, uh, they, they, are, they are drinking every other day. They are using abusing substance, youths, uh, school going children, and even those at the university. So I'm so passionate uh, to be there to, to be an advocate uh, of mental health issues and uh, help uh, people recover from their illnesses and to stay well, to stay well after uh, being diagnosed with the condition. That's what I can say, Sarah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And thank you so much for giving yourself to this important work because uh, you know that uh, generally speaking within the African context, uh, mental health has never been uh, taken uh, quite seriously and uh, there's a lot of myths that surround uh, uh, mental health. So let's then get into the conversation. Let's start the conversation by you defining for us uh, or you just explaining to us what mental health entails. What does it entail? All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so when we say mental health, uh, this is just uh, like we have uh, two separate words, mental, which means our mind. So uh, and health, it's wellness. How well are you? So a uh, mental health, uh, it's just the way uh, psychologically, emotionally, socially, how well are we? Be, how well are we? And uh, our feelings, what are our decision? Socially, how do how do we interact with people? And mentally, how are our feelings? What are they? Are they positive or are they negative? So mental health uh, does not just look uh, at the psychological component, but it also look at uh, now the, the social part. How are you associating with others? And the psychological part, like how are you processing things? Uh, what are your thoughts? And even the behavior part, how is your behavior? So is it uh, a behavior that when, when you, you are with people, people, they become so irritable, uh, you're not someone that is able to associate with others, uh, those kind of things. Yeah, so uh, mental health, uh, it also 
uh, determines us how uh, we live with others, how we associate with others, and uh, how our feelings coming. <laughs> what are our feelings? What are our emotions? So it entails uh, lots, lots of components, and it's it's very broad. But in short, uh, that's what I I can say. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I actually never thought mental health is that broad uh, because a lot of us look at mental health from a very narrow lens. Uh, you know, in fact, for me, maybe because of my context and uh, because I've got teenage uh, kids uh, that sort of educate me on such things. When I think of mental health, I think of, uh, you know, depression, anxiety. You know, I actually didn't realize that, uh, you know, it's got uh, many aspects and it's a, a broader um, uh, you know, topic. Let's then uh, get into um, talking about how then people can support, um, you know, community members that are challenged uh, uh, um, in terms of uh, mental health. How can, um, you know, communities uh, be of help or how can communities... Uh, be a great support system to people that are dealing with mental health all right uh yeah uh you have uh, brought in a very uh, important uh component whereby uh as communities we also need to uh, provide support to those that are mentally ill because uh, for them to recover they need love they need care they need uh even support from family members from community members so uh it's very important that our communities uh they uh, look at mental health as any other kind of illness let's say you have malaria you have um you can't stigmatize someone who has malaria or maybe someone is HIV, HIV positive. We don't stigmatize. That is now. Yeah, it has started that, uh, yes, people can live positively. Yeah, so we have to have the same mindset uh, with mental health, the way we, we view mental health. It's just like any other disease, but now it's just the mind, uh, the feelings and the behaviors that are somehow not okay and is making an individual not to act in a very good way. So it's not like an individual has chosen that I have to act this way, but just because of the illness that they have. So it's very important as communities uh, to sensitize people uh, to break stigma, issues to do with stigma. So let's not laugh at the individuals. Let's not throw stones at them, labeling them that they cannot even uh, participate in community activities. We have seen those kind of cases whereby people, they, they are... They are not regarded as uh, community members just because they are sick uh, mentally. They cannot get access to some of the, the, the things within the community. Let's say there is uh, a subsidy program whereby people are receiving, let's say, maize. They are receiving fertilizer. Those people, the, somehow they are kind of stigmatized that no she or he cannot do anything he's mentally ill he cannot receive this kind of things even at school we have seen um cases where i wake whereby uh people they have been expelled from school the teachers they say no we don't want this uh student to come again or this pupil to come again to our school just because she or he's mentally disturbed so yeah as communities it's very important to support uh these uh, kind of cases to ensure that they are also living a healthy life they are enjoying just like any other individual yeah mm, mm, mm. beautiful and well said well well said so it's actually disheartening to actually hear that uh, you know the schools uh, themselves do stigmatize uh, children i'm actually a teacher by profession okay I started my career as a teacher um, but also, I think it's because of lack of awareness, because uh, the teachers themselves yes. are probably not trained yeah. uh, in this aspect, mm. so they actually cannot um, sort of differentiate or they cannot be able to identify, uh, you know, when yeah. somebody is mentally challenged. Yes, that's very true, Sarah. Yeah, it's they don't know, they don't have knowledge on how uh, they should go about uh, treating those uh, kind of uh, 
people like let's say in a school so maybe if we can have a special training or maybe those teachers that have uh, they have gone to school and learn uh, special needs they can be uh, be uh, located in uh, even remote areas hard to reach areas where those kind of people uh, might also uh, come from so it's it's only in towns where but we have uh, special needs uh, teachers but uh, some areas where it's far hard to reach areas people they don't have that kind uh, of um, access to to those kind of special needs teachers as a result the other teachers they don't know how to handle the pupil or how to do it so that's why uh, maybe uh, they they might not be comfortable to be uh, with that uh, kind of a uh, kid uh, who is mentally disturbed or maybe they have epilepsy. You have heard about epilepsy whereby uh, people they converse, they have seizures. Yeah, so that's even uh, one of the common uh, common uh, disorder that we actually see. So it's common among uh, school going children and uh those people that are epileptic they also have uh, learning disabilities they have behavioral disabilities uh they cannot uh, maybe sit at one place they like to move up and down they might cause trouble something like that yeah mm. Mm. and you bring a very important aspect to the conversation around uh, you know uh teachers being trained and, uh, you know, especially the special needs teachers. Actually, my challenge is uh, this issue should not be uh, just for teachers that are trained in special needs. I actually yeah. think, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the teacher training curriculum needs to be revisited now that we're sitting where we are, where mental health has actually become, you know, almost like a pandemic. I think every yeah. teacher that is being trained, uh, you know, should be trained in uh, mental health so that they've got awareness. Mm. Look, I trained uh, as a teacher many years ago, like 25 years mm. ago. So I don't know if the oh. curriculum has changed, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but I know that when I trained as a teacher, we didn't uh, talk about mental health. In fact, I didn't even know that mental health exists. Um, so now you can imagine if a teacher like me is still in the system, well, I'm not a teacher anymore because uh, now I'm uh, mm. in the private sector. Um, but mm. if I'm still in the system because I, do, I was not trained, uh, you know, in mental health and there are no awareness programs, I would not know how to deal with um, you know, a child who is battling with uh, mental health. So, yeah, mm. so the challenge is that every teacher really must be, trend uh you know in uh, mental health and there should be mental health awareness programs that are run uh, yes. in schools yeah uh, mm. and i know that uh, you're doing uh, quite a lot of work in that space where you're going to schools with uh, um some of uh, your group uh, some of uh, you know uh, passionate uh, people about passionate mental health you're going to support uh, the learners in the schools uh, do you just want to talk about that work that you're doing uh, in the schools all right yeah thank you so much so uh i have a project i'm the one that uh is leading that project whereby uh we are moving around schools uh here in malawi uh whereby we are providing awareness uh, to issues uh, to do with mental health, uh, especially tackling uh, those common conditions that are very, very common uh, among uh, students. Uh, so it's uh, both at primary, secondary, and even uh, at university level. So there are issues to do with suicide, even as young as 10 years, nine years, uh, children are committing suicide. They don't know how to, to handle issues. Let's say they are stressed at school, the way they are treated. So we are even training teachers. Uh, we have uh, a certain project that we are also doing at a certain primary school, whereby we are providing awareness, uh, more or less like mentorship to the teachers on how they have, how to provide a conducive mental environment to the students. So it's not uh, that, yes, a student, let's say they have done something, but the way now they punish, they might also affect uh, the child's uh, mental health. So we are advocating uh, those kind of issues. And to university students, uh, issues to do with suicide as well, 
uh, issues to do with a uh, substance use whereby uh, there's lots of peer pressure among our students that they, they have, it's a must for a student, a male student especially, to take alcohol. Uh, people are abusing cannabis. I don't know if you know cannabis. It's mm. uh, one of those uh, drugs which when you take them in high quantities or even in a small quantity, it has effect on your brain. You might be very uh, intoxicated and become uh, so psychotic, behaving abnormally. So we are trying to advocate uh, that uh, kind of um, those kind of issues. And we have also an online um, WhatsApp group uh, whereby we have sessions uh, almost every other day. There are talks. There are videos, uh, they are posters, just trying to sensitize these students. And we have a day that is Mondays where they have, a, if they have a question, then they forward it uh, to us. So it's a group of people, as I've said, some are nurses, I work with them, uh, some uh, we are doing uh, another project, uh, which is also called Mental Health Project. So we try uh, to address uh, those kind of issues. So uh, there are positive feedbacks, uh, which students send me every day that uh, you are doing a very good work. I was about to commit suicide. I saw your post. So we also offer free counseling to the students every Tuesdays. Yeah. Thank you for all the work that you are doing in uh, the much uh, needed uh, space. Uh, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you just for your commitment. Um, mm -hmm. So the point of this conversation today is to contextualize mental health within the African context. Uh, because like I said, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, within the African context, uh, Mental health is something that uh, people don't quite understand a lot, and it's uh, yeah. really, the, you know, taking a back seat. Um, uh, like I'm saying, you know, growing up, I never even knew there was uh, issues, uh, you know, that uh, mental health was a problem. Um, so then let's talk about how culture impacts mental health. How does culture impact uh, mental health? All right, yeah. So uh, you have brought in a very uh, important uh, aspect as well, culture. So uh, the way uh, the society uh, views uh, issues to do with, let's say, if you have uh, illness, how should you you present it? So and how do they view uh, that kind of uh, illness? So mental health uh, in many cultures in Africa, it's actually viewed as uh, maybe someone has evil spirits, they are bewitched, they are being cursed. Yeah, so they will say, no, this one has been bewitched, maybe because of their, their, what, their bad behaviors, or maybe just because uh, someone wants to get rich and they have used them for rituals. We have seen those kind of things whereby... <laughs> There are so many, so many cultures. So let's say if a family has uh, someone with mental illness, sometimes they, they might not uh, seek help first. They will say, uh, let's go to the herbalist, let's go to the traditional doctor. So in doing so, sometimes uh, they end up uh, delaying the, the case, complicating it. And now when it reached to us as uh, medical people, now... Uh, people become so, so, uh, so sick, like they are very psychotic, they take time to heal, and uh, mostly uh, functionality, uh, most of the clients, it's, it's very, very uh, down, like they cannot be normal, very normal as uh, they can be when maybe they came earlier to the hospital. So those are the things that are uh, culturally in African context. Um, it has made uh, people not to seek help first. Uh, families not uh, not able to reveal that I have a child is having mental disturbances or we see those kind of behavior. So people, they, they prefer going to the traditional healers than uh, coming to, to the hospital. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Thank you, thank you. So then the next question would be, uh, what can we do to break free from these uh, cultural practices that do not help with uh, mental health? Uh, all right, so um, it's 
uh, it will depend uh, maybe on the, uh, we can say the decisional makers, uh, the traditional authorities, now it's coming back even to, to us as individuals, as families, uh, issues to do with uh, sensitization as a country. Uh, we can do uh, a lot of uh, things uh, in order to break uh, this kind of culture. So it has to start uh, from the primary level at school. People ha have to be educated. They have to know issues to do with mental health. They have to know how to handle themselves. So it's not learning away from responsibilities, but they have to know that if I do this, this might affect my mental health. So <laughs> that's one of the things that I see, like people, they are learning away from their responsibilities. Let's say they were involved in getting loans, like for many people. Now those people are coming on their neck. They tend now to, to start worrying or they might be now affected mentally. So us as individual, we need also uh, to be very active to, to to take good care of our mental health individually or even within our families let's know how should we treat a uh, different kind of children even children they have a uh, different kind of needs feelings temperament those kind of things so uh, we can start at primary level then at tertiary level uh, even in in those uh, traditional uh traditional authorities, uh, traditional leaders can be even sensitized on how uh, they have to sensitize people on uh, the, the importance of seeking uh, medical help whenever they see a family member is mentally disturbed or maybe someone is behaving abnormally before it reached to the point that they are mentally disturbed. The family has to take part maybe in counseling that client. And now, uh, yes, I've just remembered something uh, whereby issues to do with uh, those points whereby people can go and seek help they can go and uh, reach out to a social worker, let's say a counselor like us, Slelabis, but there's no that kind of place whereby people, they'll see it's written counseling center. There is no, like you can move maybe lots of kilometers in Malawi, whereby yes, you see hospitals, but uh, in those hospitals, normally they don't uh, provide a mental health care service. So people might have issues, but they don't know where to go. They might feel stressed, but they don't know where should I go and seek help, especially those that are in remote areas. At least maybe if you are in town, maybe you have a phone, you know, a counselor, you know, someone, a friend that works at a mental hospital, you might contact them. But those people that they don't have phones, they don't have radios, they don't have televisions, those are the, the ones that uh, they, they need those kind of services as well. So as a country, we can also prioritize mental health through uh training lots of individuals, uh, counselors, social workers, having pasta pastors that look into that kind of uh, kind of uh, services, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and well, well said. Let's now bring this conversation home. Let's look at uh, the role of the parents. What are some of the good habits that parents can do in order to support their children's mental health. All right. Uh, yes. So uh, there's this other saying that say a charity begins at home. So yeah. as children, they need to know what to do. Uh, they need to know when, uh, let's say, when they are wrong. They need to know how should, uh, what are the things that I'm supposed to do? What are the things that I'm not supposed to do? And as parents, let's be friends with our children, not as uh, that kind of <laughs> authoritarian type of parent whereby pa children, they view you as someone who is very harsh, who is like someone like a king, a lion that they cannot come to and uh, maybe uh, tell you all their issues. So I have met even many cases whereby uh, the children that sometimes I cancel, the adolescents, they will say, no, but madam, don't mention it to my parents. I smoke weed. I'm using substances. They cannot say that. So I was like, ah, what's going on? Why are you using substance? Then they will tell you lots of issues, lots of issues, issues to do with uh abused, they have been raped, but their parents, they are not aware that the, the child is raped. 
they was just see their behaviors that i think my girl child is behaving somehow she's not happy or maybe she's not interested to go to college again so we have seen even at university level people are being raped three times four times but their parents they are not aware of that so even establishing that kind of a uh, child and parent good relationship uh in order to for our children to see the to see us as friends and they also can learn from us so another thing is even as parents being role models i've seen parents that abuse substances they smoke in front of their children they drink in front of their children so what do we expect those children to be they also like imitate our character so we have lots of things to do as parents. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so open communication is uh, one of the big gathering yeah. from, uh, you know, parent, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, child relationship. So that if the child is struggling mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, a certain issue, they can, uh, you know, easily come to you uh, as a parent because you've got uh, an open uh, communication um yeah but uh, that sort of uh, is a challenge because within the african context you know that uh, you know that is sort of uh, um uh, a problem uh, you know like you were saying you know the kids are actually quite afraid of uh, of their parents how can one overcome uh, that kind of a challenge uh all right uh, but us as parents uh despite yes that uh children they have to respect us uh they are not uh, supposed maybe to be that very loose uh I'm, I'm not i'm not saying that uh it, it has to be that kind of uh, parenting where it's a freestyle or it's just a permissive type but you can apply uh, the par the different parenting style based on that kind of uh, a particular situation so if a child is doing good you appreciate them uh if they are not doing okay you also uh, use uh, another type of uh, parenting whereby you will tell them the reason why you're not happy with what they are doing so we have to be open out out like to tell them why do you say they should not smoke why should they not lay, maybe uh, start sleeping out with girls or boys at an early age? We have to tell them why the reason. They have to know the reason why you're saying this is bad. So sometimes uh, it's more or less like we say don't do this, but they are not aware. Why should I not smoke? Why should not I? Should I not drink? Yeah. So <laughs> those kind of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Eh? So, you know, uh, a balanced parenting uh, perspective is important, mm -hmm. you know, a love driven uh, mm -hmm. parenting style uh, with open mm -hmm. communication. And uh, look, it's an area of growth, uh, but uh, people need to commit themselves, uh, you know, yeah. to grow in that area so that uh, they, they raise a child uh, who is uh, balanced. Um, so then uh, we've probably touched on this. What should we do when we see that um, uh, there is psychological distress, uh, you know, within, uh, you know, maybe a family member or within our community? Um, I know you've touched on it here and there, but uh, let's just sort of, uh, um, you know, nail the conversation. Um, what should people uh -huh. do when they notice that uh, there's psychological distress? All right. Uh, so when someone is stressed, uh, you actually see their behavior. So in psychiatry, in mental health, uh, we actually observe people's behavior. Why are they doing that behavior? So every behavior, it has... Uh, it has a meaning. So uh, people that are stressed, they will not tell you that I'm stressed. They will not tell you that I'm worried, but you, you actually see from uh, their behaviors, from what, what they are doing maybe they are refusing to go to school they are refusing to go to work they are just sleeping the whole day or maybe they're involved in reckless uh, behaviors taking alcohol almost every other day maybe abusing substances those are the kind of things that uh, you as a family member you have to observe so it's behavior they will not tell you when you ask them are you okay they will say i'm okay <laughs> yes even those that are going through are marital problems 
yes you might say that yes this one is not okay but they will say i'm okay that's how we are trained like to be strong in african context so as if you notice uh, that kind of uh, behavior uh, to the family member let's uh, be uh, non-judgmental uh, let's try to probe more let's be uh, passionate let's take time like don't force them to, to say the matter right away but you can actually uh, support them in many ways and very most important thing is for you to seek help so uh seeking professional help is very important and uh, people uh, recover very fast when they go through counseling or psychotherapy or they might be prescribed medications so going to the hospital to seek help uh, that's very uh, important uh, when we notice uh, someone that uh, is maybe stressed up or we can use uh, some of the tips let's say uh deep breathing yeah relaxing techniques they can do some exercises as an individual once in a while it's very important to exercise the more you you are physically strong uh, your brain mentally is also uh, very strong uh, i diet, diet balanced diet uh very very important taking enough fluids and uh those kind of foods that will help uh, to stimulate your brain and neurotransmitters like fish uh ground nuts those kind of things that are mostly they are grown like the the plants uh <laughs> yes unlike the the meat things but those things that are plants they are not natural they are also are good uh to promote uh neurotransmitters that uh, make someone not to be stressed and um issues to do with uh, having someone that you can trust you can tell them your issues so don't uh, think that when you have issues it's only you you are the only one no people are going through a lot of uh stories they are going through a lot of issues it's just a matter of opening up so it's very important to speak up to remove that mask so nowadays with issues of social media you're seeing your friends they are enjoying life but tomorrow you hear that person has committed suicide the one that was standing on a bmw yeah so people there we are we are moving around with lots of masks so we have to remove that mask and be real if you are not okay at least tell someone that you know i'm me i'm not okay i need help yes so that that has to be now in us mindset change yes if i ask you sarah are you okay if you're not okay be open if that person you trust them me i'm not okay i need help help me on this and in doing so the more you talk about the issue the more people now they they will see on how to help you and even us the ones that are we have someone that is close that they have trusted us with their issues let's learn to be to be secretive like to keep secret uh, issues to do with confidentiality privacy so it has proven that even people nowadays they are not able to to be open just because they are afraid they will hear the story some to someone else <laughs> they, will, they will share their your story to someone else so people will be like hey, let me just keep the story to myself or maybe let's say you your husband or your wife is abusing you be open speak to someone and seek counseling and seek help uh don't wait until things are now at the very severe stage yeah thank you well said well said thank you so much for sharing uh, those practical uh, tips. Let's now look at uh, the triggers. What mental health problems? Aha, uh -huh. all right. So um, for someone to have a mental health disorder, as you have said, uh, there are some triggers. So it cannot start without any trigger. There, there is something that that causes a mental health disorder. So there are things to do maybe within yourself uh, that is intrinsic factors. And that, those are the things that you, you can be able to control them. But there are some external factors that they are out of your hand. You cannot control them. So you, you now balance. If they are within you, now you must know how best should I handle this issues to do with avoidance you can avoid some of the things let's say you are someone that uh when you see something you don't 
<laughs> you keep on remembering it or maybe people are saying bad things about you then going to them and approach them no so avoid some other things issues to do with alcohol substance even behaviors within marriages within relationship poor communications those kind of things so as an individual know your strength as well know your weaknesses and improve on the weaknesses and uh, on the external factors let's say it's a natural disaster or let's say you have a certain illness a medical problem that is out of your control let's say you have cancer you have hiv you have diabetes or any other chronic uh, illness so you just have to accept and have uh, a positive mindset that yeah i can be okay as well just accept the situation and see uh how best can you do it and if all this fails that's where now seeking professional help it's very very important yes oh well you brought a good point practical points uh, are very very helpful and uh, useful as uh, we start bringing this uh, uh, conversation to to a close let's look at uh, roles that uh, leaders uh, play in this uh, uh, in in this whole um a scheme of things when it comes to mental health what what role do the leaders play or what role right, can leaders as... play to help all with right. their mental health all right thank you health? so much all right so thank you so much sarah uh, for uh, uh bringing uh in that point so that is very uh important our leaders they have even a big role to play uh sensitization uh, issues to do with advocacy, uh, issues to do with um, even uh, leaders being models, being role models uh, to the to the mm -hmm. community members, um, even uh, issues to do with uh, lobbying for funds. Uh, I have said uh, issues to do where we have uh, communities where maybe they don't have a hospital. They are far from, uh, let's say, a medical hospital. So even as leaders, they can lobby for funds. They have to be very creative. Uh, community activities where people, they can build uh, their own thing or community uh, thing, let's say a community hospital or something that uh, they can... Um, depend on whereby they can be able uh, to rely on let's say a, a small uh, community hospital where they can have uh, someone that will be able uh, to assist them and even at schools we have mentioned that a uh, very important area at schools even at church uh, leaders religious leaders that's a very important part as well so uh, people that are mostly, um, they are religious. I know because I'm also a lady, I'm a pastor as well. Yes, yeah, so I know people that uh, they pray, they don't want to seek help. Because, uh, yes, sometimes you might say, uh, I'm a pastor, I'm a church leader, but I'm going through this. I should not say it, I should hide it. People will, will judge me that uh, you are a pastor, then how come you are sick? How come you are taking uh, mental health medications, but you are a pastor, you are a man of God, you are a man of God. Yeah, so it's very important even as leaders, as religious leaders in our churches, that's where even a lot of people gather. We can even have sessions, we can even have awareness campaigns whereby we can, we can uh, have someone that they are aware about mental health and they can actually teach the congregation on issues to, to do with depression communication budgeting uh financial uh, management financial discipline financial literacy those are the things that they are even causing more more stress to people issues to do with loans uh, issues to do with poor uh, management of resources yes so uh it's very very important for leaders at all levels uh to take uh part uh, in as far as uh, mental uh, health issues are concerned Well, and thank you so much for sharing so much. I have personally learned a lot, uh, you know, um, around this topic of mental health and, uh, you know, uh, looking at it through the lenses of uh, the African context. Uh, you've brought a lot of, uh, you know, practical uh, perspectives that are, worth, that are worth 
thinking about. So as we close uh, the conversation, do you have any parting shots, any close that you'd want to leave our listeners with? All right. Uh, so uh, I think in closing, uh, what I can say is uh, there is no health without mental health. So uh, at all costs, take good care of your mental health. If you're normal, if you're okay mentally, you'll be able to achieve the, a lot of things. And physically, you feel also okay. So uh, it's very important to, to protect your, your mental health. Uh, wellness uh, every other day, having a routine, consulting, uh, learning from lots of people, having knowledge that is even part of mental health. Yeah, so there are a lot of things that as individuals we can do at a personal level and also at a community level and as a country at large are in issues to do with mental health. But thank you so much, Sarah. I'm so honored. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, so humbled to be uh, in this uh, podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you to you for making the time and, uh, you know, for bringing uh, the African context. Uh, yeah, much, much appreciated. And uh, uh, you have a great day. Um, and uh, just uh, uh, thank you for uh, all the information that you've shared. It's been really, really useful. Thank you so much. Awesome.